What's up superstars, it's Phil here, and in today's video, we're gonna be doing something that's rarely done and not common in the DTF world, and that's a white knockout. We've seen this done on a black shirt with a black knockout effect to make it feel much lighter, but it's not often done on a white shirt, so that's what we're gonna be tackling today. So first, let's go ahead and talk about the design that we're gonna be working with here. It's a big print, it is 15 by 14 inches, and we're gonna be printing this on a medium-sized shirt. It's actually gonna be a sweater that we're using from Gildan, it's the G180. Uh, so once we're done here, it's gonna look oversized, and again, guys, with a big image like this, you can technically press this onto the sweater or shirt, but by knocking out the white design in this print, you're gonna be able to use the white in the sweater and you're gonna get a much better transfer and a really cool print overall because it's much lighter and much breathable for you. So this is going to be how it looks once we knock out the white effect versus a solid white design like this. So let's go ahead and dive right into the tutorial and you do want to follow to the end because not only am I going to show you guys how to do the white knockout, but we're going to go ahead and press this onto the sweater and you guys can see the results afterwards. So you definitely don't want to miss out on that. Hi guys, my name is John and I'm a graphic designer for Transfer Superstars. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a white knockout effect and we have our design right here. As you can see, it has a white background in it and it has some gradient effect outside the artwork. This kind of effect doesn't work well with DTF prints, so along the way, as we remove the white background, we'll also have to remove the gradient effect. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is to make a duplicate layer just so that we have a backup just in case we need the original file, and you can do that by pressing Ctrl J on a window. Let's delete the one first, and if you want to do it manually, you can right-click and duplicate the layer and it'll be the same. So let's make this one the original, and let's just hide the original layer for now. There are a couple of techniques that we can use, but in this particular image. What we'll be doing is just going to color range and select the white and by default, it'll be by zero, and if you're, you try to increase the fuzziness level. It'll make a more precise selection. And if you can notice, the gradient effect is also being selected and it looks gray. That gray area is the gradient effect that we would like to get rid of. So I think this one should be good and let's try to press OK. Now a selection has been made. Right here in the bottom right corner again can click on layer mask and then click on it. Then it'll turn it into something like this, but you can easily invert this one so that the artwork stays and not the background. Once you click on invert, the artwork will now show and should look perfectly fine. But if you zoom in, you'll notice that some of the layers are not transparent. As you can notice, every time I make a copy, it gets darker and darker and becomes more solid. So we'll have to do this a couple more times to make sure it is perfectly solid. And now there's a bunch of layers on our layers panel. Let's select everything by going to the top one and then going to the bottom press on shift click so it selects everything in between, then right click on it and make it into a smart object. It might take a couple of seconds since it's a pretty large file, it's around 100 inches, but we'll have to tone it down. We need only around 16 inches and let's resolve 300. So now it would look like this. It looks pretty good already. But if we add a solid color, you'll see that the gradient effect is still here. So what we can do is make a mask layer again, press P on the pencil and just click and select the inside of the artwork. It doesn't have to be precise since we have a lot of space that we can draw in. These empty spaces you'll just have to trace and just make sure that you don't accidentally go over the artwork something like this since it would also erase this area. So let's make sure that we are inside this transparent area. Can do it faster if we do it like this. So you don't have to be pretty good at the pencil to do this and just click anywhere as long as it's inside this space. In this way, we'll be able to remove this gradient in a somewhat white color. Then after you go back to the starting point, it will connect everything. 
and then you press on the right click to make the selection Feather Edges zero. Since we already had a selection, we'll just have to press on Shift BU just to go into the correct selection though and then right click select Inverse, then just click on the mask. Press B for the brush tool and make sure you have your brush color to black. Just make a very big brush and just paint over it. So I'll just remove everything outside pretty easily. Now that we have our artwork without the gradient effect, let's just place it on, let's say, a white shirt or maybe a purple one. And it would look like this. It now looks pretty good. And this is the transparent one. This is what it looks like on a purple. Purple or maybe pinkish shirt and this is how it would look in a white shirt. So let's just remove the background for now and press Alt-I-R to remove the transparent pixels. Then let's save this artwork. Save it into a PDF. Save and preserve Photoshop capabilities so that the file would be a lot smaller. Once we save, that one should be pretty good. Thank you so much for watching. All right, guys, we are back. Thanks for following along on that tutorial. Make sure you guys bookmark that. If you guys missed any steps, you guys want to rewatch that, make sure you guys bookmark it and you guys can easily do that. So we're going to go back to pressing the design so that you guys can see how magical the transfer is going to look with the white knockout. Again, I want to mention we are going to be using a Gildan G180 sweatshirt. This is a very, very popular sweatshirt because of the price point and they've got a ton of colors. So I'll drop a link below in case you guys want to find some distribution for this Gildan. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get to the setup and also the pressing. I'm I'm going to go ahead and just briefly lay this down. Uh, I want to talk about what we're going to be using here. So this is a Geo Knight DK20 semi-automatic heat press. We're using this size heat press today because of the size of the transfer. It is very large. It is 15 by 13. And if I use anything, anything smaller than this, it's going to have a very difficult time hitting the edges. So I want to get this done on one shot. So we're going to use our Geo Knight a heat press. Now, a couple of things that I'm going to do now, we normally press t-shirts with this. I want to make sure that the pressure is adequate. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, get this done and press down. It's already fired at 300 degrees. Pre-press it for three seconds and that's also to test the pressure. So as I press down, there's only six on the pressure scale, which is pretty low. It's not enough pressure. We definitely want to recommend using heavy pressure. So what I was doing there is I'm increasing the pressure. Let's go ahead and set this again. Let's go and test this. And now, now it's at a seven, between a seven and an eight. I'm just gonna crank it just a little bit more. Okay, so it's a little, little tight. So I'm gonna loosen it one crank. It's good to go, it's nice and flat. It is already pre-pressed, so it's ready for us to apply the transfer on here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the original artwork first before I press. So this was the original artwork with the white background. And as I mentioned earlier as well, you can technically press this onto the shirt, but you're gonna get a white box around the shirt and you really don't want that. Especially over time, if this matches in color, over time your sweater will tend to change and not be as bright, maybe even pick up a little bit yellow. You don't want the white to contrast from the transfer onto the shirt. In this case, that's the main reason why we got rid of the white knockout and we went ahead and stuck with just the regular colors here. So I'm gonna flip this around briefly before we press this on so that you guys can take a look at the details. So all the white is basically knocked out and all you have is the color and you have the white glue behind it. And that's how you get such a vibrant print and that's how you get the white knockout effect. I did leave the gradient in the nose area. I could have actually cleaned that up a little bit some more but I want to leave a little bit of contrast on the nose area to really give it some depth. And we'll just see how that works. There's really no right or wrong way, especially with a white shirt. You can get away with some of the gradient effects that you've put on there. Now that the, everything is aligned, the shirt is um, pre-pressed, the pressure is set, we're just gonna go ahead and align our transfers and get this done. Uh, normally a quick trick is you can use your four fingers that kind of gives you like a three inch range in this scenario We're just gonna go ahead and use our measuring. I love this press because there's a bunch of room right here You can stick hoodies you can stick all that good stuff and you'll be fine I'm just gonna go ahead and fold this briefly in half Mark it just so that I can get that midpoint right there 
not really needed. I could have eyeballed it and gotten away with it, but I want to show you guys some safe practices. So that's three inches down from the top. That's gonna be exactly where I wanna press this design. Uh, and you guys can already see the clear part of the transfer taking hold with the white, so that's always a, a nice thing. Let's go ahead and press. Seven seconds, heavy pressure, 300 degrees. All right, and because this is not a huge solid image and I want to make sure that I limit any mistakes from happening, I'm gonna go ahead and use a cloth just to wipe down all the edges. Again, with small details or artwork like this where there's a bunch of sharp edges and you're doing some type of effect where it is very sensitive and you don't wanna mess it up, especially on a sweater, take your time, spend the extra time to let it cool down, to rub it down, and you will be in good shape when you guys peel. So that's my tip to you guys. Don't be afraid to let it cool down because you will get a better transfer when you take your time, rub it down, let it cool down, all the details, and then go ahead and peel. So I've already rubbed it down. I'm gonna, I've let it cool for about 15 seconds. I'm gonna go ahead and use one hand, hold down the sweater, and I'm gonna go ahead and peel. So what I would do next, I'm gonna flip this around. I'm gonna put this back here, and I'm gonna go ahead and do a second press. I'm gonna jog that because it was at three seconds. Back to seven. All right, guys, this is my favorite part. Let's go ahead and take a look at the design. Wow, guys, look at that. Super oversized print. You have the white from the sweater, so it's it's really not heavy at all, especially when you come to the middle part of the shirt. It's very, very lightweight. Let me know what you guys think about this. There you have it, guys. Thank you for following along on this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it just as much as I did. I hope to hear from you guys in the comments below on what you guys think about this. Make sure you guys bookmark it. And if you guys found this video helpful, make sure you guys support the channel by liking and subscribing. My name is Phil, and I'll catch you guys on that next one.